Hi readers, it's Lori. Welcome back to my channel, Books, Ink, and Paper. I'm happy you're here, and today we're going to talk about what I read in the month of July. I did really, really well in the month of July. I feel like I'm back on track, and uh, yeah, it was a great reading month. Most of the books I read were really satisfying. So I read nine books in the month of July. A lot of them, though, I don't have physical copies of, so I listened to a lot this month, which helped me kind of get back into that habit. I either watch booktube videos while I'm putting makeup on, or I listen to audiobooks. Those are my choices, typically, in the morning. I don't watch the news often. I don't do any of that. But uh, So this month, I really focused on listening to audiobooks, and I really wanted to get through a couple of these that I had been wanting to read for a while, and one of them I did a combination of ebook and audiobook. So, the first one I read was Beach Read by Emily Henry. I listened to this uh, on my libraries, like Libby, and I liked it. I've never read anything by Emily Henry before. I didn't love it, and I'm not. Uh, I say this every month, but I'm reading a lot more romance lately, and I'm getting sort of the idea that this is something I want to do now and again. And so this was kind of my pick for this month. I think I've read a romance almost every month for the last three or four months. Yeah, so this is a story of sort of a hate to love trope, uh, although they knew each other and they had kind of a interest in each other in college, but then they don't see each other for a while. They both become fairly successful writers. And the main character's dad dies and he leaves her a house that he owned. He kind of had this other life with somebody else and he leaves her this beach house and she goes there and she's reunited with this person and they don't like each other at all at this point in the beginning of the book. And and then, of course, they start to spend time together because they're both in a reading slump and they are kind of trying to help each other get out of that. It was fun. Uh, again, I, you know, I enjoyed it. I liked it. It wasn't like, oh, my God, this was the best book of the year, although I know for some people it is, but it wasn't quite there for me. Um, I gave it three stars. So the writing was great. The plotting was great. And, and I liked it. So three stars is a good rating for me. Next, I picked up The Last House Guest by Megan Miranda. I had hauled this a couple of months ago, and it was calling to me as a good summer read because it takes place in a beach town. It was indeed a good summer read. I think this is my first I've ever read of Megan Miranda's. I do plan to read some more of her work. It is a story about a girl who is friends with another girl who comes in the summers, and they, her family has a big, huge house. They're very rich. The other girl is not, and she's grown up in this town all of her life. And her friend is the daughter of this rich family, and she is like connected to the family uh, through work. And her friend dies, and it's ruled a suicide, but she doesn't really think that it is. So the plot really follows the anniversary of the friend's death, and then some things coming up around whether that was really a suicide or not. It was a surprise twist to me uh, in the ending, so that I liked, and I'm not sure if it was because I wasn't paying attention or if it was because that was a surprise twist for other people too. I don't know, but I did enjoy it. I gave it four stars. Then I read Their Eyes Were Watching God by Zora Neale Hurston. This was a gift from my daughter for the Advent Book Exchange. It had been on my to-read list for a very long time, and Megan picked it for me one day when she was here when I asked her what I should read next on the Advent Book list. And uh, so she chose this one, and I'm so glad she did. I loved it. It's classic literature written in the 19th 30s, I think. I gave it to Megan to read when I went up to the city a couple of weeks ago, so I don't have my physical copy anymore. It's the story of Janie Crawford, who is a poor black woman living in the South. I mean, she's tr struggling to get by, and she meets a series of people that really change her life and move her forward in some ways in a very fascinating way. And yet, she doesn't have the easiest life. And 
she's a very strong woman. So the character of Janie is, is just beautiful. And the writing is so lyrical. I will say this. I had a bit of a hard time reading it because of the dialect. Uh, and, and in that time, I mean, it was a period dialect for Black uh, characters for sure living in the South. It's just not, it's an older, um, I mean, it was written in the thirties. And so it, it, it was not a dialect we hear frequently now. And reading it at first was a little clunky for me because I was trying to sort of <laughs> not translate in my mind, but I was trying to just, it's hard to describe, but I, I had a little challenge with it. Then I listened to it. After I listened to it for a bit, I got used to it. And then I could go back and forth and do both. So I don't know if I would recommend reading or listening. I would recommend, and I said this to my daughter, actually reading and listening at the same time, because it's beautifully narrated also by Ruby D, who has a gorgeous voice and the language and the the beauty and lyrical beauty of the writing is so strong and so gorgeous that Ruby reads it in a way that just, uh, it just made everything perfect about this book. And so obviously I gave it five stars. So the next pick was a surprise pick for me. It was not on my TBR and it was not on my radar. And I can't even tell you what made me do it, except that I was sort of looking through my Kindle and Nook one day on my phone. I think I was waiting for something or somebody. And I saw Pines by Blake Crouch. And I had already read Pines by Blake Crouch <laughs> years ago. And then I realized I had it also on Audible, which I don't remember how that happened, but, but I have it, I had it in both ebook and Audible. So I picked that back up. The reason I did was because I'd like to read the second and third in the Wayward Pines series. And in order to do that, I wanted to go back and, and remember what the first one was like. And I did remember it pretty well. I was pretty certain I remembered what happened. And, I, you know, I had a really good memory of it. And yet it was lovely to reread it. I love Blake Crouch. He's a new favorite of mine. In the last couple of years, I've read Dark Matter and Recursion, and they're so beautifully done. And so I wanted to kind of go back to Pines and see what that one was like. And, um, and I, and I liked it. I'm glad I listened and read it again. I'm glad I took the time to do it. I am possibly, it looks like Berna from Berna's Bookish Adventures and I are going to buddy read part two and part three. I need to get with Berna and see when we're going to do that. But I, I gave it four stars. So this is a story about a man who is uh, in a car accident and he wakes up in a hospital and he has a very sort of distant memory of what happened. And he's a police officer, detective, investigator. And um, the doctor and the nurses are trying to help him figure out what happened. And he's feeling like something's wrong. And so he, and he can't reach his wife and he doesn't have his phone. And he doesn't have his wallet. And so he leaves the hospital against medical advice, kind of sneaks out. And then he goes to try to find out in this town where his stuff is and where he can stay and sleep. And things just get weird weirder and weirder and weirder. And I won't tell you a whole lot except that it's really well paced and it's a, it's a great novel. It's not very long. Uh, there is a series. I think it was on Fox um, years ago. I don't know if it's available to stream anywhere. I would like to s hope that it is because after I'm done with all three parts, I'd like to watch it. I've never watched it. But again, I think I will go on to number two as soon as I can. And I think I have all of them on ebook. Then I read Home Before Dark, which I've talked about a bit. This is a thriller by Riley Sager, who is a new favorite of mine. The last little while I read Lock Every Door some time ago. This came out June 30th. It was highly anticipated by me. I've been waiting for it since the beginning of the year. It's a book within a book, and it and is a story about a family who moves into a home, Bainbury Hall, very expensive home that is discounted deeply because some kind of tragic things have happened in that home, but they buy it and move in anyway, and they're fixing it up, and some weird paranormal things start happening in the house, and 
and they end up leaving the house, which you find out, I think, in the jacket. Yes, they leave the house pretty quickly after they bought it. And uh, the dad writes a book called The House of Horrors, which is also inside this. So it's a book within a book, The House of Horrors, which her dad wrote. And then as they as she go, grew up, her dad dies and he leaves her the house and she goes back to see what she's going to do with it, probably fix it up and flip it. She doesn't believe any of that stuff happened. She doesn't have any memory of it. She thinks the book is trash, although it was written as nonfiction and she returns back to the house and this is her story and the story of what happened when she was five great great premise great plot loved it so glad I read it um, I realized I didn't rate it on Goodreads but I gave it five stars really 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 recommend it if you like haunted thriller kinds of books then came Reading Rush, which I've done in another video wrap up, so I won't go into a great detail on this, but I read Persepolis by Marjane Satrapi, graphic novel about her time growing up in Iran during the Islamic Revolution. Short read, another Advent Book Exchange uh, gift for me, so I'm really doing a pretty good job of reading all of those. I'm hoping to get them all read before the next Advent Book Exchange, so we'll see how I do, but I haven't read a graphic novel in a really long time. This was very well done, rich detail, memoir, nonfiction, highly recommend it. I gave it four stars. Then I listened to The Shadows by Alex North, which fulfilled a prompt for the reading rush. Never read Alex North before. This was a first for me. It was okay. I didn't love it. Uh, it was well written. Uh, it's a kind of a spooky dual timeline guy. Has a friend who's killed from when they're I think in high school and he goes back later because his mom is dying and some of the things from then are coming up now and uh, recurring or reminding him. And um, <clears throat> it, it was all right. Uh, I, I was going to read The Whisper Man and now I'm kind of like, do I want to read The Whisper Man? But I'm going to take a look at what some of you thought about it because I know a lot of people that have read it. So I'm going to go back and look at your ratings on Goodreads and see what you thought. I gave it three, this one three stars. I read The Other People by CJ Tudor. I've wanted to read that for a while. I got it on Libro a while ago and, uh, and just hadn't finished it. I think I even started it a while ago. I did. And I just never got to the end. But this time I diligently, diligently, diligently went through it. And I liked it. It was, I wasn't, I thought it had a paranormal aspect. And I guess it did a little bit. But it was um, a pretty plausible plot. I think Megan, my daughter Megan told me she didn't like the ending. But uh, I'm not, I mean, I was okay with the way it ended. It follows a man whose daughter is kidnapped, he thinks, and his the detectives that investigated the death of his wife and child at his home say, no, that was your wife and your child that died and you're crazy. And so he goes on this quest because he's certain that he saw his daughter and that she's not dead and that he is going to find her. Thriller, uh, four stars. I do plan to read more by C.J. Tudor. I think she has a couple out as well. Um, not a ton, but a few. And then the last one I just finished in Under the Wire is The Family Upstairs by Lisa Jewell. This was also my first by Lisa Jewell. I have another one that I hauled a couple of months ago. The Family Upstairs was an uh, ebook and audio choice for me. Uh, both were options that I had access, access to. The ebook was available at the library. I, what I kept doing was borrowing it, reading a little bit, and then letting it go. And I wasn't getting into it. I wasn't, I mean, I, it wasn't that I wasn't good. I just wasn't. Other things were coming up for me that I was taking priority with. Anyway, I finished it. And um, I liked it. I gave it three stars. So again, it was good. I liked it. It wasn't, it didn't blow me away. It was a little weird. So it is a story of a baby who's found abandoned in a home in England where the husband and wife and another man are dead. And there's a note that says, you know, that they ended their lives and please take care of our baby. But they had other children living in the house. And so those children 
are now gone, but it was like this communal living situation, a couple of families all living together in this house and the weird, or weird, weird, weird things, weird behaviors started happening. And I thought it was going to be paranormal, not paranormal. So if you're a person who likes paranormal, don't expect that to be in this one. If you're a person who doesn't like paranormal, you might be really pleased with it. Um, I, I was pleased with it. I mean, I did like it. I just, yeah, it was, it was all right. It was, it was great. It was good. It was hard for me to give three stars. Isn't that funny? Like I'm such an encourager, like way to go. Four stars. Oh my God, that was fabulous. Five stars three stars. Like it just feels like a C I think in school. Right. I just, but just because I give it a C or a three doesn't mean you will give it that either. So that's, I look at other people's ratings and sometimes I really love something and they're like, man, no, that was a one star, two star for me. And I, you know, and I don't always go by that because you can't go by that. Everybody's tastes are unique and different. Everybody feels a different way about the work. And so there's that. Absolutely. There's that. Yeah. So <laughs> thanks for joining me today and listening to my fairly long reading wrap up for July. I am so excited about August because I did so well in July. I just feel like I'm going to knock it out of the park. And again, I'm not sure what I'm going to read yet, but I have some ideas and I'm excited about some of them. And yeah, we'll just see what happens. Let me know what you're reading in August. If you have a channel, let me know what it is so I can subscribe and watch your videos. Thanks for your support, your comments, your likes, thumbs ups. If you haven't subscribed already, I would love for you to do that and uh, support my channel and interact with me and let me know what you're reading. Just let's share our love of books, our love of reading and our accomplishments and how much we read and how much we enjoy it. I am longing to read a big book. So I've been checking out some big books that I've been thinking about and talking about lately. I'd, I'd like to get a big book in in August. So stay tuned and see how I make that happen. Oh, and I already met my Goodreads reading goal for the year. My reading goal was only 40 books this year because I wanted to allow room for bigger books and allow room for myself to savor. And I, for the most part, feel like I have savored, but I've already met my goal uh, at the end of July that the family upstairs made the, the confetti go. So I'm proud of that too. So let me know where you are in your reading challenge for the year too. And maybe in some of the other goals that you set for yourself to read in this year. All right, guys, have fun. Happy reading. Bye.